Welcome to MSPTDA video 34. Hey, we're still talking about data modeling for slowly changing dimensions. But in this video, we're definitely going to use Power Query. But we're going to load everything to the Power Pivot data model and create a star schema data model that we can build a data model pivot table from. Now our end result is to have team and employee with the sales as they change over time. Now here's our fact table, and we have a date key and an employee key. The employee is our dimension. And I don't have a single column that tells me which team each employee is on. For example, Chantel, employee ID number 4, starts out on team A. There's the employee key 4 for January. But then Chantel changes to Team C for February and March. That makes it difficult to create a report that shows all the employees for all the teams to summarize sales. Now, this is exactly how we get our tables. But let's go look at the finished version. If we had a marker in our fact table that told us the unique identifier for team and employee, and we had our key for date, then we could create exactly the report we want. So that means we'll use Power Query to transform both employee and team tables into this new dimension table. And then somehow we have to get this unique identifier for employee and team into the fact table. Once we do that, then we easily can see Chantel team A, unique identifier number three, and Chantel Team C, unique identifier number 14, can easily be determined in the fact table. Now, I've already added all four tables to the Power Query editor. Clicking in each table I used in the Data Ribbon tab, Get and Transform from Table Range, and then opened up our Queries pane. And over here, I can see our four queries. I can double click any one of these to open up the Power Query window. I'm going to double click D Team. Here's the Power Query window. Opening the queries on the left, I can see my four queries. Now for our data model, we're actually going to take that D team, create a lookup table that we can use to bring the unique identifier into F sales. Then we'll take D team, do a few transformations, and load that employee and team dimension table into the data model. Now I'm going to change the name. Disconnected, which means it's not going to end up in our model. Employee team for merge. We'll actually merge the transform table into the F sales. Now the first thing we need to do is take the team and start an end date and repeat that first record for each one of these team members. So I select Start and End using my Control key. Still holding Control, I click Team and Team key. Right click, Unpivot Other Columns. And just like that, I've repeated teams and dates for our team member number. Now up in the formula bar, I want to edit the table.onPivot other columns function. The last argument, I'm going to double click value and call this employee key. Now with this employee key, I need to pull the employee name into this new table. Home ribbon tab. Over to combine, merge queries, merge queries. In our table for merge, I'm going to select employee key. D employee as our second table for the merge. Employee key, left outer, all from the first, matching from the second. Click OK. That brings in a full table. Click Expand. Uncheck Use Original. The only column we want to use is employee. Now we have a combination of all the employee names and the team name we're going to use. Now we need to add a unique identifier to this. So we go up to Add Column, drop down for Add Index Column. I'm going to say From 1. I can see the formula up in the formula bar. Double click Index, Employee Team Key, and Enter. Now, this is the table that we're going to use to merge and bring the correct unique identifier into F Sales. But we have more steps we need to do. But before we do those steps, I'm going to also use this exact transformation as the final D employee team that we're going to load to the data model. So over in Queries, I'm going to right click Duplicate. Immediately, I'm going to hit F2 and rename this D employee team and Enter. Now we'll clean this up later. For now, we're going to go back to our employee team merge table. Now the next thing we need to do is in order to merge between this table 
and F sales, what we really need over here is a unique list of all the possible dates and employee key. So now we come back over to our table. That means for this first record that has the team name, employee key, employee name, and the unique identifier for this table, we have to repeat that first record for every date in this range. Now last video we saw how to do this, and we saw that we could add a complicated formula that took the actual two dates and created a list of dates, but that formula is more complicated than if we used list syntax and these were actually numbers. So we'll select these two columns, right click, change type, and we're going to change it to whole number. Once we do that, we can use simple list syntax to say, hey, go from this number to this number and create every number in between. So now add column, add custom column. We'll call this date. List syntax, if I did 1, dot, dot, 5, and curly bracket, that would create a list from 1 to 5. The dot, dot says go from the beginning to the end. But for us, we simply want to say start date, highlight 5 end date because this formula is going to end up in the table.addColumns function. It will know for each row in this table to get the start and the end date. Now when I click OK, in the first row there's our list of serial number dates. Here's table.addColumns. There's our formula. Now when we click Expand, it's going to repeat this record for every single day in this list. Let's click Expand, Expand to New Rows. And just like that, we've repeated the records for every single one of the dates. Now we have what we need, employee key and date. We can use the merge feature to merge those two fields and the two fields from F sales. We need date, data type, down to date. Now the only column we're going to need to pull over into F sales is the employee team key. Now we go over to F sales, up in home, merge. Merge Queries. In our Fact Table, I select Date and Employee Key. Second Table, we want our Employee Team for Merge. And all the way at the end, i got to select it in the same order, 1, 2. Now we have our link between this table this table. Now we can pull all the matching records here into our Fact Table. And Left Outer is really what we want, because there's lots of records in this table that are not going to have a match over here. So now I click OK. I can expand, and the only column we want is Employee Team Key. Click OK. Now for the table that we load into the data model, we don't need this column anymore. So right click Remove. Back over to our disconnected employee team table. Just to clean this up, the only final columns we need are date, employee team key, and employee key. Right click, I can remove all the other columns. This table is not getting loaded to the data model. This table is just here in Power Query to get the employee team key into F sales. Now we have a few more steps in D employee team. Here's team key. We're going to use that in our report. Employee, we're going to use that in our report, and employee team key. That's what we'll use to connect over to the F sales. Right click, remove other columns. Now we're done with our Power Query transformation, so I'll come up to close and load, close and load two. I only want a connection. That's for the newly created table here. Click OK. Now I've already loaded D date to the data model. I'm going to come to F sales, right click, load two. Click Add This to the Data Model. Click OK. These two tables are not going to be loaded, but this one is. So right click, Load to, Data Model. Click OK. In the Data Ribbon tab, we can click Manage Data Model or over in Power Pivot Data Model. We can see our three tables, Diagram View. I'm going to take Employee Team Key and drag it to our foreign key in the Fact Table. Date Key over to a foreign key. Now we need to add our measure, data view, F sales. And our DAX formula, we'll type in the measure grid, total sales. I can see it up in the formula bar. And I'm going to indicate the unit here in the label, colon, equal sign, the sum. And there's our sales. Make sure you have the table name and the field name, close parentheses, and enter. Now we want to add something like thousand separators, reduce the decimals. There's our DAX measure. 
Let's click the Create a Data Model Pivot Table over here in our Power Pivot window. It brings us back to our Excel sheet, Existing, Collapse, something like M18, click OK, click OK. I can see our tables in the data model. F sales, I'm going to drag the measure down to values. Employee team, team key has our team name. Employee, that's the employee name. From the date table, we have an attribute that shows year and month. Drag it down to columns. Now over to our pivot table, because the employee column is coming from D employee team, which is a dimension table with all of the employee names, I can right click the pivot table. Go down to Pivot Table Options, Display, Show Items with No Data on Rows. If we tried this in our earlier videos from the Fact Table, this would be grayed out because there weren't all of the employee names in that table. But this shows up because we're working from a dimension table. Click OK. And there's our final report. So we went from our initial four tables. We did a bunch of cool transformations in Power Query, loaded it to the data model, built our relationships and our DAX measure, and we get our final report. Now be sure to check out the other videos about slowly changing dimensions.